Chapter 8, Recombinant DNA Technology. The topics that we're going to cover in this chapter are the role of recombinant DNA technology in biotechnology, tools of recombinant DNA technology, techniques of recombinant DNA technology, applications of recombinant DNA technology, and ethics and safety of recombinant DNA technology. Now, because this first topic is so short, we're just going to launch right into it. Namely, the role of recombinant DNA technology in biotechnology in Chapter 8. The learning objectives for this topic are define biotechnology and recombinant DNA technology, list several examples of useful products made possible by biotechnology, and identify three main goals of recombinant DNA technology. What do we mean by biotechnology versus recombinant technology? So biotechnology is the use of microbes to make practical products. What do we mean by that? Well, making cheese, soy sauce, beer, wine, all of that is biotechnology and we've been doing that for thousands of years. More recently, we were able to grow organisms, um, obligate anaerobes, that were able to make acetone for us much more cheaply than we could in the lab. Also, growing penicillium mold and breeding it, so to speak, domesticating it, so it produced much more penicillin than it did in the wild. We've been doing that in the 20th century. And recently, we've been able to come up with organisms that do environmental cleanup, um, make vitamins for us, make paper, and that is recently. So let's differentiate recombinant technology from biotechnology, and that is intentionally modifying the genomes of organisms. Now, when I say that, you think of me taking a gene, snipping it out of one organism, and moving it into a completely different organism. Well, that is recombinant technology, but we've been doing recombinant technology by breeding different organisms, be they domesticated animals, domesticated plants, you name it. So you can either do it through natural, unquote, methods, or you can do it through recently developed methods that make it much easier, and uh, we get the result that we want. Here's a famous example, at least it's my favorite one. Somebody came up with the idea of, hey, it would be wonderful to cross a radish with a lettuce. You get a ra uh, the, the radish root, and you get the lettuce leaves, and the whole organism, the whole plant, is edible. Well, guess what? When they crossbred radishes with lettuces, they got the radish tops and the lettuce roots. Yeah. We have since been able to accomplish this goal through the use of biotechnology, but uh, it didn't work the first time when we tried to use, quote, natural, unquote, methods. So here are goals of um, recombinant technology. Eliminate undesirable phenotypic traits in animals. Uh, in humans, animals, and plants. So far we have had success in eliminating a genetic disease called severe combined immunodeficiency disease, also known as the bubble boy syndrome, by taking the gene that makes the product that these people need and inserting it into their cells. I think this is wonderful. Combining beneficial traits of two or more organisms to create a valuable new organism, so that would be an example of, say, combining lettuce and radishes, and creating organisms that synthesize products that humans need. We've taken the human insulin gene and inserted it into E. coli, or sometimes into Saccharomyces a yeast, and now they make human insulin in factories, and we don't have to use extracted beef insulin, porcine pig insulin, etc and diabetics can get actual human insulin. So that's it for this very short topic. Here's a reminder of what I want you to learn from it, and we'll move right on to the next topic.